What is up, Nerf Nation? I am Scraps from Griffin Mods, and I am not quitting Nerf at any point in the near future. Instead, today I'm bringing you our review of the Nerf Sonic Ice Retaliator. Why am I reviewing this blaster now, you may ask? Well, there's several reasons. First of all, I picked it up for dirt cheap. I just found it for $20 flat at my local Toys R Us. And if you guys are interested in finding great deals on Nerf products, make sure you head over and like our Facebook page, which I'll have linked in the description box. Frequently, when I find deals anywhere on Nerf products, I'll put them on our Facebook page. So if you're interested, make sure you check that out. Secondly, I thought it would be a good idea to review at least one of the blasters in the Sonic Ice line. And third and most importantly, I bought this blaster specifically with the, int with the intended purpose purpose of installing the Retaliator Unleashed Stage 1, 2, and 3 kits from Orange Modworks in it. And since I just got the Stage 3 kit with the sealed breach in the mail today, I figured I better hurry up and get this review out for you guys. Before we get started, I just want to point out that because I've already done an in-depth review on the original Retaliator, we won't be following our typical in-depth review format, and we'll mostly be talking about the aesthetics of the Ice Retaliator. I will, however, be including a muzzle velocity test to give us a baseline for the muzzle velocity of a standard Elite Blaster, and because that wasn't included in the original. So if you're looking for a more in-depth review, uh, make sure to check out our original Retaliator in-depth review, as well as the range test comparison, which I'll have linked for you in the description box as well. So that's enough banter, let's get straight to the review. You can see down here that it says only at Toys R Us because it's a Toys R Us exclusive in the US. As far as the box goes, it's pretty much exactly the same as the original Retaliator, except it has this snow and ice design going on in the background. Inside the box, Just like the original Retaliator, you get the removable stock, the barrel extension, the foregrip, the blaster itself, instructions, and a 12 round mag. Going through it piece by piece, we have the 12 round mag, which I love the 12 rounds. I think it's the perfect happy medium of size to ammo capacity. Uh, the only difference between this one and the original is that the one on the Ice Retaliator, the clear piece on the front is completely clear instead of being this opaque orange that was on the original Retaliator. We also have the barrel extension, um, which I really like the blue that these pieces were cast out of. They catch light really well and they look really, really good. Um, you can see here that they've done some moderate paint changes. It doesn't have the white stripe on the top and they have gray and white on this piece here in the center and also gray on the part where it attaches to the blaster itself. We also have the stock which is cast out of the same ice blue plastic and also features some moderate paint changes when compared to the original. We also have the foregrip which is exactly the same except the grip portion is now silver instead of this black or smoke gray that was on the original foregrip. And of course we have the blaster itself which looks really really good with this uh, clear ice blue plastic that they've cast it in. Again it has some minor paint changes uh, when compared to the original. This is our modified retaliator that we've used in a few videos and you can see some of the changes that they've done in the paint scheme here. You'll also notice that the plunger tube in here is orange and not white like it was on the original retaliator. Which is interesting because I think the white plunger tube would have actually looked better um, because it would have fit with the whole ice design scheme and the new paint job. It has an orange jam door, which I believe the jam door on the original was black. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty much exactly the same. When I put the stage 3 kit in here, I think I might actually um, take the white plunger tube out of my other retaliator and put it in this one. Here's what the Ice Retaliator looks like fully assembled, and as I stated before, the intention of this video was mostly just to give you guys a brief overview of the aesthetics of the blaster. I am, however, going to include a crony test, because that'll give us a good baseline for the muzzle velocity of a typical Elite Blaster. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up for you guys now. This is our crony test, and this should give us a general baseline of the muzzle velocity of a typical Elite Blaster. So our first shot... It's giving us a reading of 74.33 feet per second. Our second shot, 72.37. Our third shot, 71.34. Our 
and our fourth shot 65.04 so I'd say we've probably got an average around 70 feet per second for a stock elite blaster so while we've got the crony set up I'm curious to find out just how much the barrel extension affects the velocity of the darts so let's check it out shot number one it's giving us a velocity of 69.57 feet per second shot number two 64.85, number three, 65.86, and number four, 69.85. So I would say that there is a very minimal effect on the velocity of the darts, but we were averaging about 70 feet per second before, and I'd say we're averaging probably somewhere around 68 feet per second right now. So that would translate to a few feet on your ranges, uh, but overall, not as much of a difference as I would have expected. So I think that about wraps it up. This has been Scraps from Griffin Mods. If you guys like the video, please subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.